Welcome back to a brand new video, Moon Family. I have three total stocks in today's video and stay to the end for a one cent stock that keeps on announcing deals that have something to do with the Department of Defense and the government. They already have contracts with the Department of Defense. If you, you can tell just by looking at me what stock I'm talking about, but you're going to want to watch all the way to the end for that one. And don't forget to drop a like to spread the word about these stocks, spread the word, just get it out there to the algorithm and it will help out this video a ton. And let me know in the comment section what stocks you believe in and what stocks you believe I am sleeping on. Just comment the ticker down below. I read every comment you all post. And if I don't even respond, there is still a 90% chance that I read that comment. Use the Moomoo link in the top pin comment. And tomorrow is the last day to sign up and deposit any amount. It can even be a penny to get one free share of a Neo. And if you literally don't have a Moomoo account and you're watching this video, I don't see what why you're sleeping on this free share in Neo because you can just put the money in and do whatever you want after that. You just get a free share in Neo. And you can also trade early on Moomoo at 4 a.m. Eastern time and late at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Trade anytime on Moomoo like you can't on Robinhood. You can see full extended trading hours. Stock number one, ticker GFAI, $1.56 right now, actually went down about 10% after hours at a $45 million market cap. They had earnings that we got to talk about. And this is a stock I've been covering as a top cybersecurity play. And they reported earnings today. They are also in robotics and AI. And GFAI has been on an absolute tear with accepted for after hours today, but they've been on an absolute tear. And two days ago, we hit a high of $1.72. We called GFAI below 50 cents in the private Discord. If you want to join that private Discord, link in the top pinned comment. We got a scanner running live in there where you can catch momentum plays in as well. We called that on March 7th. We also talked about it on the channel at about 50 cents. Now, they did report earnings and the revenue was 35 million for the year ended December 31st, 2021, compared to 37 million in the same period of 2022. So they actually decreased by 6.6% or $2.5 million from what they reported last year. And that decrease was primarily due to the uncontrolled resurgence of outbreak of the COVID-19 virus since April 2021. So it honestly I'm actually still surprised they only reported a 2.5 million decrease from last year based on this COVID outbreak was holding them back a lot. And we can see that they're at a 45 million market cap and they did 35 million revenue this year. When a company reports that their earnings were lower than the year before, 90% of the time the stock will drop at least in the short term. But I believe these earnings of 35 million are actually very good for a company sitting at a 45 million market cap. And if you scroll down and look at the 2022 outlook, you will find that their net revenue of 55 to 60 million is what they expect in 2022, representing a growth of more than 66 percent versus 2021. So if you're thinking long term on this one, I personally believe this is a good play. Yeah, you might be able to get it lower. It's at a 45 million market cap. And remember, they're, report, they're going to report 55 to 60 million revenue in 2022. And the company has done a lot in the past three months of 2022 that is not reported in these results, these earnings that were just reported today. And they've done so much, including deployment of more than 1,400 robots. They announced a U.S. expansion with the establishment of a U.S. subsidiary, closed a deal for the expansion of robotics as a service. Now, these two deals were actually $10 million, and they announced the signing of a non-binding letter of intent to acquire up to 36 subsidiaries, all operating in the robotics and AI sectors, and they announced expansion into Dubai and Australia. All of that has happened in just three months, and I believe they will continue to expand all of 2022. And companies in the robotics and AI sector usually trade at multiples of 5.9x to their revenue, GFAI's market cap is not even their 2022 revenue projection. GFAI is also in cybersecurity, and we know how hot that sector is right now. Taking a quick look at the chart, our next level of support is right here at $1.27. If we break below that, we have support down here at $1.07. If we are not able to hold $1.07 or $1, because after $1.07, psychological support is at $1, and then $0.90 cent is likely if we break below $1, I expect if we break below a dollar, we would recover unless the market takes a big hit on the day, then anything is possible. But the big break for future upside is a dollar 85. Stock number two, ticker SPCB. This is another cybersecurity play we've been covering on the channel. And tomorrow 
is when SPCB will be posting their earnings. If you don't believe their earnings will be good, I would wait until after they report to get in. None of this is financial advice, but if you believe they will be good, you can take that chance. That is completely up to you. Although I am pretty bullish on this. Now, I don't know if they're going to report good or bad earnings because you just really never know. But we can look at what we got in front of us to give us an idea of what they will report looking at the previous quarter three 2021 earnings. Now, they're going to be reporting full year 2021 earnings. But if we look at the quarter three 2021 earnings, it will get us a good idea of what could be coming in quarter three. Their revenue increased to 3.1 million from 2.4 million. Their gross margin increased to 34.9% from 27.3%. Their cash and ca cash equivalents at the end of quarter three was 6.3 million and their working capital was 23.9 million. Since that quarter three report, they launched a new $1 million project in California. They also had the chairman purchase almost 1 million shares of SPCB in the open market. They completed a 4.7 million offering and that offering should increase their cash position in the report tomorrow. And just on March 23rd, SPCB was awarded Croatia's first national electronic monitoring project. Usually what happens on company earnings is they report a loss. And if they report a loss, the stock will pretty much instantly drop depending on how bad the loss is. If it's a, if it's a terrible loss, they're going to tank. If they report an earnings beat, the stock will only go up if the earnings beat is massive and unexpected. Even if they beat it just by a tad bit, a lot of the times it will still go down. You see that all the time. So be careful playing earnings because there is no real way to predict if they will beat it or lose and expect a ton of volatility in many stocks as companies continue to report earnings, including ticker MULN, they should be reporting tomorrow. We also know that SPCB is working to release a new version of its cybersecurity technology with enhanced protection from cyber attacks. And that was just announced on March 9th. So hopefully we can get that cybersecurity news with how hot cybersecurity is, especially if they beat their earnings. That would be a huge deal. Taking a look at the chart, depending on how the earnings are, you may be able to pick some sh shares up at 54 to 56 cents around there. There is historically strong support at 48 cents. So if the earnings are bad, it's likely going to go down there and then we'll see if it bounces from there. But if the earnings are good and they beat it, for example, a break above 66 cents, which is a historically strong resistance, we could break above that and keep on going. Last time we did that, broke 66, we made a move quickly to 87 cents and a lot of the price action will be based on the earnings tomorrow. So make sure you're keeping an eye out for the earnings for SPCB. Stock number three is ticker CYBL. This is the one cent play with acquisition news today. They keep on dropping news that has something to do with the Department of Defense and government agencies because that is what they focus on. They focus on supplying their products to U.S. Department of Defense and other government agencies like the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Army. They're a 0.0147 right now, up 1% on the day, an 84 million market cap. They announced the acquisition of Catalyst Machine Works to accelerate its unmanned aircraft solutions platform with the U.S. Department of Defense, government agencies, law enforcement, and global commercial markets. Catalyst Machine Works, a leader in the highly technical cinematography drone market with established product lines that address the high-end military-grade market, 100% made in America. They own 100% of Catalyst Machine Works, and as a result, the unmanned aircraft solutions business unit because now Catalyst Machine Works is going into the Cyberlux Unmanned Aircraft Solutions business unit, and that will deliver an expected annualized revenue of 22 million US dollars with an expected growth of 67 million revenue in 2024. The company is now positioned to build the future of UAS technology and create enormous growth in revenue and profit over the coming years and across significant commercial markets such as cinematography, oil and gas. That's an interesting point they made is oil and gas is involved here construction and real estate, CMW supplies the best FPV cinema drones in the world to all major movie studios. They are a Department of Defense UAS supplier. So the synergies completely match here. They also are a Texas law enforcement drone supplier and the CEO stated the UAS market is expected to be 36 billion in 2022 and up to 85 billion in 2025. And this is just one section of the overall Cyberlux business 
unit with this amazing team in place, I fully expect to accomplish new significant growth milestones and have our UAS business propel Cyberlux to over 100 million revenue in this vast, rapidly growing market. This acquisition comes after they just announced their first major European government contract. There it goes again, government five days ago, they announced a contract. Just last month, they acquired Digital Automation Solution, which is expected to deliver 17 million revenue. And in January, they acquired Createx, which is a 6 million revenue producing company with 32 employees. They keep on acquiring companies. They keep on getting these contracts. And I don't think they're slowing down anytime soon. The CEO is really on a mission here. He's been with this company for years, and now is his chance to really grow this into what he always wanted it wanted it to be. And he's doing that right now. They sent out a tweet today introducing our director of engineering and CTO of Cyberlux UAS, Mr. Neil, who is also one of the pilots on our X class racing team. And these huge UAVs are the newest, fastest, and most exciting class in drone racing. That was just today. What is next for CYBL? The CEO Q&A, they said they're getting their questions in and they're going to post another q and I actually hosted one of the q well, I, I participated in a Q&A with CYBL a few months back along with OG Tiger. They're going to be canceling 700 million outstanding shares, which is going to be huge. There's a lot of complaints about the share structure. They don't have the best share structure out there, but they are canceling 700 million. They have a quarter one 2022 roadmap that they're going to be putting out the new IP joint development filings and business plan for all business units and financials release. And Cyberlux says they are ready to post the best quarter in company history in terms of their financials. So taking a look at the chart, we've been consolidating beautifully lately. I mean, this looks really, really good. And I like what I see. We close right above the 0147 resistance right here, right above it. And we're looking to make our way above the strongest resistance that I've ever seen for CYBL. Every time we get here, it struggles breaking it, which is 0167. We bounced off of 0133 down here four times in March. So you may be able to get lucky and get some shares down there, but I don't really see us falling below 0133 unless the market tanks or the earnings are not good, which they said will be the best. So really, we got to break 0167 and then we can make our way up back to two cents. Keep in mind, none of this is financial advice, but if you do want to join the private Discord, we have a stock scanner live. We have moon fast finds. We have live streams going on there. We have 5,000 members of the next runner live. We have everything in this private Discord. Make sure you go down there, check it out. That's it for me. Like the video, comment down below what stock I am sleeping on. Peace.